Thanks for tuning in to more NASCAR talk right here. You are watching either Prime Sports Network, the Prime Sports Network YouTube channel, or Mystery Caution. Chances are, since uh, we are recording this on a Tuesday, it is Prime Sports Network, so uh, we hope you will subscribe to this channel if you enjoy our NASCAR videos and our F1 videos, and of course you can catch those as well uh, when we uh, slide these videos on over to our Mystery Caution motorsports channel we'll have links in the description on both channels for either channel and don't forget on saturdays uh, we have a report where we have qualifying and practice updates for each nascar race um, and uh, of course we also uh, promote f1 uh, where uh, we do a report i guess it's every couple of weeks right cj seems to be like every other week though every once in a while they'll take a couple week break here and there we've got a week off this week um before we head to imola uh next weekend though okay well uh we'll have a lot to talk about next week when we so what is that race next week imola was imola imola is in northern italy by milan okay i should know that being italian but um <laughs> bad on me so okay so we'll have a lot to talk about uh, with Max not winning. Anytime Max doesn't win, there's something to talk about. Uh, Definitely. There's a lot to talk about going on here with uh, Miami and uh, what, what transpired there. So definitely tune in next week as we preview Imola. Yes. So that's on next week's show. Uh, but for this week, it's all NASCAR and a crazy, crazy, exciting race at Kansas. Uh, look, it, uh, it, it, no matter what the analysts say, because they pretty much tell you that every race is great. Uh, on TV, Kansas, a lot of years, very boring. Uh, not a lot of passing. We talked about if you qualify up front, that's where you're going to win. If you don't, you're not. Um, but we had one of the better races, probably the best race maybe that we've ever seen at Kansas. Yeah, it was definitely up there. I think the progressive banking and what they've done uh, with that track more recently has really, really turned things up and, and really plays to this new car's strength. So more recently, over the past uh, couple of races, we've seen some really good ones there. Uh, Sunday's was no exception, even with the rain delay. It was interesting how the, the cars started rolling off of pit road pretty much the minute the um, coverage for the Formula One race ended, but uh, perfect timing, couldn't have been better. And then we ended up with a great race. Um, it's interesting, the finishing positions, um, you still had to start within the top 15, basically to finish inside the top 10. So it is still a track position uh, track, but there's definitely a lot better racing going on. Yeah, and it, the, the, of course, everybody by now knows how the race ended. So it was a crazy, exciting. I mean, it, it was all the reason. What what really what really stood out, of course, was the fact that we've never seen it happen before, where the, immediately they show the winner of the race and then they changed it. That's never happened before. Um, I can't imagine how that would have felt had I been either a Chris Buescher fan or had wagered on Chris mm -hmm. Buescher again knowing that it never happened before because that was almost like when you get to being that close I mean you're just waiting for you don't you don't care what they say you don't care the, the broadcasters don't mean anything to you you're just looking at the screen and you're waiting for it because it's been a hundred percent to this point and so when you saw Buescher won you go there it is no matter what they say Bush is the winner and then for the first time ever that wasn't the case usually when they're that close they don't post anything on the screen they wait and wait <laughs> until it becomes actual actually not official but you know at least nascar recognizes a winner so i thought for sure and based on the way that the the tv camera at that start finish line it was a little bit further to the right than the line it made it look like busher where he was further down the track had actually just edged larson so when they went back and actually looked at the photo finish from exactly on the line and Larson had it by probably less than an inch, just that that front splitter just barely sticking over the line there. Uh, and then they flipped it back. The like nobody at home knew until you saw the crew chief's faces, both of them, one of like shock and they will both love shock, but one of extreme disappointment of shock and one of extreme excitement with shock. Well, the excitement yeah. one was the right, what I saw first. That was the yeah. first indication that, wait a second, maybe? Because again, I'm only saying that because I did have a parlay in it. 
and it had Larson. I talked about this on, on Sunday morning show. I, I, I said, look, I, and we talked about it last week at four to one. It's just not a good play. And then he went to two to one on race day. And of course, <laughs> you can imagine what I said then. So I said, look, if you're going to take Larson, you should parlay him. And I said, parlay him with basketball, baseball, hockey, golf, whatever. That's exactly what I did. I parlayed him with golf and hockey, and I actually made a couple hundred bucks on it. But I came this close to making nothing. So I just could imagine how that feeling, uh, again, I just would have been devastated. Um, yeah, never never seen anything like that happen before. Um, exceptionally close. Uh, it had to have come down to where the transponders were in the car. Yes, that's what they said. Yep. Point, you actually, you have at that point, absolutely have to go to the photo finish, which, you know, from directly down the line, it, it does clearly show Larson yeah. just by an yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, everybody knows it's not like it's some rigged thing or, you know, they're just telling us one thing and we're seeing another. It's it's obvious. It's right there. Um, but like, yeah, like you said, apparently they're picking it up on the transponder. And that's what that's why Busher won first, or at least it appeared that way based on the transponder. But the transponder does not dictate the win. It's the w w so what is it? A splitter? What did you yeah, say? Yeah, it was the splitter. It's a splitter, just, okay. Just a very small, fraction, yeah, very small fraction of it over the line first. All right. So uh, Larson gets to it. But look, this is another lesson based on whether or not you want to be betting on drivers that are 4-2-1. to one. I mean, look how close it was. And Larson does not win anyway if there's not that caution late. So he got very fortunate. Um I'm maybe a little bit surprised that Denny Hamlin allowed Larson around him. He, I don't know if he took his eyes off of him, but you know that that was surprising because you would have thought, what, what, why, why wouldn't he block him? Um, unless Kyle was just too fast for him. I don't know. Because so, once he once he went for the win, which you had a yeah, feeling he was going to do, he wasn't. He, he and, and then he leaves his side. You know, he has nobody pushing him, and and that's what happened. He was dead. Yeah, exactly right. And Hamlin and Busher were both playing the fuel game in the last laps leading up to that final caution. Uh, so, you know, I don't know if his head was in the game uh, after that, if, if he didn't expect that, you know, that kind of run from Larson or, w or what the case was. Uh, but he was back in it with a chance to, to win as well. But you're right, Larson just muscled his way through and there was nobody behind it. Larson, of course, also got a, a much better push at the start too. Uh, but it, it just goes to show also with the new car, the configuration of the track, the ability to be able to have Larson. They were side by side coming out of turn two on that, on that restart. Busher got ahead and then Larson even lost a little bit further ground, but he was able to get that run off the high side on the back and be able to, to make a pass. So that goes to show that the, the rule changes that they've made, at least with the cars, has definitely stepped up the uh, competitiveness and, and the racing that we've been complaining about for years. We just need more tracks with the progressive banking and the features that Kansas you know, has that brings out the best of them. And, it, and, and the thing that's kind of tough is that, like, let's say you go out. I mean, California, have they decided what kind of track they're going to build? Last I heard, they were still looking at something like a small Bristol. So okay. it, it's been a while. Yeah. So I, I think that one's changing completely. And those two tracks, California, I think Michigan was better. Uh, Michigan produces better races, generally speaking, than California did. But both were that same kind of two-mile D-shaped oval that's exactly what they should be going for. Something more like Kansas, emulate that to your point, be able to get something that the fans can get excited about. Um, you know, Bristol is exciting in and of itself, but you're sure. never going to be able to replicate Bristol. You can probably redo a Kansas elsewhere. Yeah. And what's unfortunate is you get the hit. I mean, with the change with the new car, it, it's, it's improving say the, some of these 1.5 mile tracks, but it's not improving the, or it's taking away from the Bristol's and the shorter true. tracks as much as we yeah. like them they're not the same yep. so i and, and i don't know how you get that back but that's their job okay so we've got darlington this week uh not a short track this is an intermediate at 1.3 miles uh, this is uh, one of the oldest tracks out there on the series 125 races all time and 
this is going to be a good test because we we just saw can now again different but we saw kansas hey we got a good race is it possible that maybe we get lucky again this week because darlington it hasn't been very exciting lately and um we can only hope fingers crossed that something changes um darlington is considered the most the most similar track to darlington is considered homestead and homestead is is a, is a 1.502 mile racetrack um why do you think that is why do you think uh, people would consider darlington and homestead to be very similar or the most similar uh well both are tired tracks for sure uh so they wear out tires um you re you're required to have you know four four new every time you go down pit road there's not really a great opportunity i mean people will try it teams will try it but it, it's if it lasts for a long run it's going to chew your tires up so it requires tire management the shape they're similar they're completely different i mean florida's got or uh, miami has or homestead whatever you want to call it it's got progressive banking in it as well i guess darlington has very primitive um progressive banking because it's got the two tiers the lowest groove is a pretty shallow uh banking but then you get up at the top and uh it's kind of a steep one but i think you know w along with the tires and that tire wear i think the fastest line being right up against the wall on both tracks is probably why they're most similar to one another and why people lump them together you've really got to be able to ride that outside line and keep it close to the wall every single lap yeah and again that's going to tell you pit stops are going to be important again you got to make sure that uh, you have the advantage of starting on the outside um pit strategy maybe there'll be some uh, pit strategy uh, decisions that also come into play so uh we'll see it's the first time we're seeing darlington this year and we have not seen homestead so uh this uh in, in a way will be a little bit brand new for us uh, as far as the key trends to keep an eye on uh starting position only one pole sitter since 2014 that was joey logano in the very first race with the next gen car a couple of years ago in the spring race of 2022 10 of the last 14 st have started though outside the top five and that includes uh starting positions of 13 twice 15 twice 16 and 18. two of the last three have started outside the top seven rows and this is with the new car 15th and 18th um so first just going on starting position doesn't seem to matter as much top 20 you're okay yeah definitely want to be looking inside the top 15 still though um it's relatively hard to pass um the trick about darlington or, or maybe it's not a trick but maybe it's a trend that we see um is, is quick in qualifying quick in in the race you, you you're able to adjust more on the car uh, but it's really the line that you get and being able to again as i said stay up very near the top of the wall but um, maybe a little bit more room for things to happen here maybe it could be more cautions that tend to come out at this track it, it's pretty rough uh, we had eight cautions um, in this race last year and if you look at the top four finishing positions you know william byron run it won it from the fourth starting position uh, but the second place second place finisher started 20th third place finisher started 21st uh fourth place finisher started 10th so you can definitely come up from the top 20 um you know to keep it safe probably look at the top 15 people that are quick in practice and especially those long runs because tire management is going to be such a key yeah i mean what do you think of martin truex like for instance like his last two weeks he has not qualified well when he hasn't practiced well and yet you know he put himself in decent position a few weeks ago and he was there and almost won the race on sunday what imagine do you think's did, going on there what's that imagine if imagine if he did qualify well and that's he didn't true. have to fight his way throughout the rest of the race right yeah um that that's definitely part of it um i think it it's interesting because the the setup for a quick one lap is probably significant or definitely is significantly different than what you need when you're managing tires over a complete um long run so i think truex was set up for the long run uh, he was able to make adjustments to the car throughout the race i mean both segments before we got to the final stage went caution free so there were really only a handful of very quick brief adjustments he would have his team would have been able to make on pit road during green flag stops 
Uh, they really didn't get a swing at it until the stage break. So I think dialing in some of that, some of that short run speed, but even still, he got himself in position by the end through the long run speed. So I, I think if they would have made a wholesale change, like they probably would have gotten fooled if there would have been many cautions early on because they would have been behind. They were behind in practice and qualifying. So they probably would have over adjusted more to the short run stint and not have been able to have the long run advantage that they did have. That was what worked them forward. Um, I mean, it just goes to show in contrast, somebody like Noah Gregson. Um, Gregson was able to qualify in the front again and he was able to stay there throughout the race. That's three weeks in a row now. And prior to that, he wasn't qualifying well. And guess what? Wasn't finishing well at the same time. But that starting position, that ability to be confident in your setup going into Sunday uh, without getting head faked by early cautions and things like that, I think that really played to Truex's advantage uh, because he did have a fast car over the long run, and that's how he clawed his way forward. Yeah, and, and of course, a lot has to do with the fact that you're not going to get away from failing to qualify or practice well and then find yourself in a contention to win when you're a young driver or have mm-hmm. uh, an inexperienced crew chief. This is what happens when you have a good team and a very experienced driver who uh, knows that uh, practice and qualifying, yeah, it's important, but you could figure it out you got the whole day to figure it out on sunday and especially if you've been at that track for as long as he has so um do you think he wins without the caution he did have the fresher tires or what was it fresher or four i don't know if he had four and hamlin had two or if he i think it was that a case or but i think it was seven laps ago with the caution i believe and he was obviously coming on strong he was passing everybody quick the last guy is always going to be the toughest, but I don't know. I get the feeling he might have, and I had money on Hamlin, so I was a little bit at that point relieved for a moment because I, I kind of felt that Truex was going to get him. I think Truex would have caught him. I don't know. I don't know if it would have passed him. Teammates. They are teammates, but... <laughs> Hamlin maybe I don't know is Hamlin a better teammate than Ty Gibbs because Gibbs would have put him in the wall to win a race (laughs) like I think Hamlin's a little bit more on the Ty Gibbs side as well so I I think Hamlin would have fought tooth and nail to keep it and I think the uh the arrow block that that was such a big story the week prior um you know it's a little bit less of an effect at Kansas because of the the um, progressive banking and the way that the cars can move uh, up and down but you saw it, every single challenger that came up to make a pass for the lead they would have to go to the bottom and you couldn't get the runoff of the bottom onto the straights to be able to fully complete the pass so uh, Truex would have really had to have sailed it down into one of those turns and kind of bonsai up at the front and I'm not so sure maybe Hamlin would have given him room but yeah, it remains to be seen he definitely would have caught him I just don't know if it would have made the pass all right. Well, either way, it didn't work. I mean, Danny, really, I mean, if I if we had to do the race over again and you just say, OK, who do you think had the best car? I still, I just think it was Hamlin because I, I, he got screwed on pit road like, what, three times? I mean, it was just terrible. So yep, absolutely agree. Um, OK, so um, as far as the new car, Chevy's won three of the four, including the last three. So Chevy's got three wins with the next gen at Darlington, three straight wins. Toyota, is so Toyota, by the way, is the one that does not have a win with the new car here. So mighty Toyota and Chevy. So Toyota's won. Um, they've had some edges the last few weeks, not this week. And once again, it seemed like to be. I'm saying this like every 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 week, but seven different race winners the last seven at Darlington. All right, let's get started. Pop up on the screen here. And, oh, what a big surprise. You knew this was going to be the guy at the top, especially after a win. You knew it would be the top two. <laughs> yes, at this point, yes. Kyle Larson and Denny Hamlin. And and, and, and still it's Larson by that plus 50. Uh, but, if uh, again, I just hope everybody, if they've, whether they've never heard our show before or never heard us give this take before, hopefully you digested what we said last week regarding what you have to deal with when you're taking drivers at either four or two to one. It's not that easy. So that's why it's a big risk 
when you go down that road. So the question now, though, what we just talked with Larson is, okay, so here he goes again, 4-1 to one again, and yet before the race in September, he'd never won here. So he's 1-12. for 12. And how about this? His worst starting position ever at Darlington was last September when he started 18th. And he won the race. So that's really crazy, but that's the way it went for him. He's got three runner-ups before the win, so we know he can race here with 770 uh, laps all told. Matter of fact, he led 284 in a race in 2018 when they were racing just once a year. But, yeah, I mean, Larson's one of the favorites and all that, but once again, it's up to you if you want to go with him at 4-1. to one. I just... He won last... He won on Sunday. He's got to win back-to-back and... Back to back races. That's kind of hard to do. Very hard to do. I say that every single week. And I would honestly give Hamlin the favorite status this weekend versus Larson, not just because of the back to back winning races, but for exactly as you said, like his, his only win at the track came uh, last fall. It was his first win uh, in his worst start at the track. So He's had a lot of really good finishes, a lot of top fives, thirds, and second places uh, coming up, and he's led a lot of laps. Remarkably, 12 starts, he's led 770 laps, almost double the starts um, for for Hamlin. Hamlin has started at this track almost twice as often as Larson, but only led 200 laps more. So Larson certainly has a knack for getting out front and more out front more often and frequently than Hamlin, but Hamlin's almost led a thousand laps here <laughs> at this track. Uh, the only concern I have about Hamlin is just what he did at this track last year, 12th and 25th. Uh, he's much better than that. He led 177 laps, obviously, in the fall race, started on the front row. Uh, so I think he's got it. He's been great this season at managing his tires. He's been extremely fast every single weekend. Uh, I do give the edge, uh, hands down, this week to Hamlin for a whole host of reasons. Uh, but yeah, these two deservedly the the top choices because they've been the fastest uh the past couple of weeks at every track yeah uh, taking the laps out of the equation even though you're doubling or at least 11 more races for hamlin where he has shown um ability is he has double the amount of top fives than kyle larson so he has 12 out of 23 more than 50 percent top fives at this racetrack and four wins so uh, let's keep that in mind as well. And and how ironic is that? Hamlin starts on the front row, leads 177 laps, finishes 25th. Larson, same race, starts 18th, leads only 55 laps, and wins the race. So uh, whatever that means. Okay, next up, Martin Truex Jr. is at 6-1. to one, And this has been his position pretty much the last month or so. Um, but taking a look at his four next-gen finishes results, actually, not not all that good with three incidents, though. So this is the thing that's going to really make it hard to tell, even though his last race in September, no incident, and 18th. So that's the thing that kind of makes you go, well, why would I take him at 6-1 to one then when his results with the next-gen not good crashed in um, the uh, crash, excuse me, in this race last year, even though he led 145 laps? Um, had a water pump issue in 2022, crashed again in 2022. He did lead 248 laps when he won a race in 2021. That's with the older car. Also won in 2016 and had a dominating race in 2020 when he led 196 laps. So he's been around this track a number of times, had some really dominating performances, but I just don't like the results with the next gen, especially at six to one. Yeah, I think the odds here are a little bit, a um, little bit tight for for a, a, a you know a, a no question pick. But uh, like Hamlin, he's led over 900 laps here in his time. Same amount of starts, 23 starts. He does have the the two victories, as you said. I am a little bit concerned about not necessarily the DNFs, the the two crashes and the water pump. He, he led in each of those races, so he clearly was fast enough. My concern is whether whether or not the miss that they had last fall is something bigger than what it maybe appears to be. So it started 31st, was able to finish 18th, so a significant improvement, but obviously they were off on that on that weekend. So something wasn't right there. Um, I do like Truex though. I, I, I wish I could get, you know, eight to one though. 
I, I do like him because of what he showed last week and what he's been showing uh, probably three out of the last four weeks, being able to be in that top five, mixing it up with the leaders. He just needs a couple lucky breaks, some uh, clean pit road, uh, the right calls at the right time, maybe a little bit of luck. And I think he's going to be in victory lane very shortly. Uh, very much could do it at Darlington. But again, I, I prefer something a little bit a little bit more than 61. Yeah, he, he's definitely been the most snake bitten this season by far with the amount of win- He could have three wins right now, maybe even four. <laughs> so, you know what? Doesn't matter what happens early in the season. Just keep it up. By the end of the season, he could still be a champion. Um, you know what I would do? We just talked about it. He hasn't been qualifying or practicing well. Just wait. Exactly right. And, and, and hope he, he starts 14th or 15th. His odds then probably go up a little bit. Take him there. Take, maybe you get eight to one, uh, like you're talking about. All right, William Byron and Tyler Reddick. He's Reddick again at seven to one, uh, along with William Byron. And Byron, uh, now now we start getting to the first driver that I'm I'm interested in, because uh, he's driving a Chevy. Obviously, he's the uh, defending champ of the race. Uh, only led seven laps, by the way, uh, when he won this race last year, but also finished fourth uh, in the fall. And uh, been pretty good with the next gen car. So um, before that, not so good. As a matter of fact, he only led three laps led in the previous seven races before the next gen. So that's and he's got wins already this year. So I'm, uh, that's the first driver that I'm, I like so far based on the odds. Reddick against it's just the same thing. I mean, it's seven to one. It's Tyler Reddick. We understand why in the, in four next gens he's got two runner ups and a third. Okay, he led 90 laps in the fall. Um, his Xfinity uh, record is just okay. So he's never won at this racetrack, either series. I, I just can't take him at 7-1. to one. That's just a problem. I mean, i got to get better odds than this. Yeah, I agree. But within these two, you are looking at the two best drivers from an average finish perspective with the next generation car at this track. Um, so you're going to pay a little bit of a premium for that. Um, both of them very much should be top five material this weekend. They've both been exceptional with this new car over the past four races at Darlington. Doesn't matter whether it's the spring or the summer. Uh, Reddick has been better, um, but not by a whole heck of a lot because he didn't get into victory lane, right? William Byron did. Um, so it, it's going to be interesting to see how these two come out. I, I expect both of them to be in the top five. Uh, but like you said, uh, same thing as, as like a true X. You, you kind of want these guys to qualify outside of the top 10, maybe not show too much uh, of excitement through practice and qualifying, and then really turn it on in the race because either one of them uh, can actually get it done. It's just a question of how much you want to uh, give up of your money <laughs> putting it on them. Yeah, and of course, um, what you like, uh, I mean, it's really what... I like more than anything regarding Byron is he's getting the best odds and I think he's just as capable of winning uh, as the other drivers we just talked about. Um, uh, Reddick is driving a Toyota so we talked about the fact that they haven't won yet. To me I think that's the little bit of difference why I would go with Byron today but I need to wait on Reddick before I decide to do anything. Okay Christopher Bell at 9-1. to it's going to be a pass this week on Bell, um, especially at 9-1. to one. He was on the pole. First of all, he was on a pole last week, and that didn't amount to anything. Yeah, top 10, but he, he didn't even come close to doing nothing. Um, on the pole in this race last year, finished 23rd. So uh, probably led the first 40 laps because that's all he led. One top five out of nine. One top five in Xfinity Series. That's just not the way he's going. No way at 9-1. to one. Yeah, for me, it's more about the the past couple of weeks. Like you said last week, I would have expected more out of him and he wasn't able to convert it this week with all of the reasons to not go with um, somebody in a Toyota, uh, somebody who's not got the record and, and led as many laps as those that we've already talked about. Uh, Bell uh, definitely would be one that, that I would pass. But the next one, I'm, I'm actually pretty interested in. Oh, by the way, Reddick does not, I mean, Bell does not have a top five since Koa. So keep that in mind. Um, all right. Yeah, Chastain. We, we kind of liked him last week in this similar spot. He's 13 to 1. And matter of fact, you look at Elliott, 
Chastain and Bush. I think all three of these drivers are good uh, wagers this week. Chastain, fifth in the fall, uh, had a good race last year in this race, leading 93 laps until he wrecked. I'm not sure what the incident was. Um, maybe you recall. Um, matter of fact, he's crashed the last two spring races, um, but he has led laps in the last two spring races. And then you have Elliott, who's getting 14 to 1 in the next gen uh, when he hasn't had an incident, all in the top eight. He's got an Xfinity win on this track. He hasn't led a lap in his last six races, though, including the next gen, but you're getting 14 to 1. So I'm willing to compensate for that. And yes, I am now going to get back on Kyle Busch because he's had a couple of good weeks back to back. Uh, who knows what happens if he doesn't spin out late last week? Not sure he wins anyway, but um, probably obviously has a better result. Has a good career here, even though he only has one win. Uh, the next gen, he's had a couple of incidents, including an engine issue in 2022, a crash in 2022, but he did lead a combined 174 laps that year. A couple of decent results last year, nothing great, but again, you're getting 15 to 1. So I look at all three of these drivers, and they're all definitely drivers that I would think about wagering on today. Yeah, completely agree. I, I'm excited about Chastain because of the fact that he went out and led 93 laps before he bounced himself off the wall and then collided with Truex in that race, I, I believe is what happened. Um, but he started fifth, ended up because of the accident, finishing 29th, and then he came back in the fall, started lowly 27th, but worked his way back up to fifth. So imagine again, if he would have started inside the top 15, top 20, probably would have been back up there leading laps, probably would have, um, you know, had it been in with a shot for, for the win. So I think Chastain, absolutely a top choice. Elliot, uh, like you said, a whole lot of good reasons to be choosing him. Another one with a really good average finish, I think outside of uh, Byron and Reddick with the next gen car, I think Elliot's probably like third or fourth on that list of uh, top finishes at, or average finish, I should say, at Darlington. So a lot of good reasons to take him. He's been quiet since his win. He's been quiet all season, um, but still doing significantly better than he's he did um, did last year for certain. Uh, and then you got to look at Kyle Busch, and, and Kyle Busch has a fantastic history at this track, just one win. Uh, but this is a type of track where you kind of think of a guy like Kyle Busch. It's a veteran type of track it's an experienced and aggressive type of track and and Kyle Busch just the way that he's been racing especially what he showed last week I think puts him you know would he not have spun uh, would have been <laughs> would have been a much better story for him uh, but I think that probably carries on into what he's going to be capable of doing here at Darlington I think he's over the issues that um, we talked about yep. the past couple of weeks he's shown it over the over the past most recent two weeks at least uh, coming up on three here, I, I fully anticipate him to be on his game again here uh, here at Darlington. So I like all three of them. Uh, of the bunch, though, I would probably lean toward Chastain just because I don't think he had the ability to, or the chance, I should say, to show what he really had within him in his car last fall. Uh, it was still a fifth-place finish. I think if he would have qualified better, probably would have been in for a win. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with uh, Kyle um, out of the three. And that's because part of it's because he's driving a Chevy. Uh, and, and now he's got three top tens in his last four races. So, again, like you said, he, he's, he, it's coming back. And, by the way, Elliott's got five top fives in his last six races this year with a win. And he's 14-1 to one driving a Chevy that has won three straight races at this racetrack. Come on. 14-1. to one. Chase Elliott, 14-1. to <laughs> one. I don't know what's going on here. But, okay. I mean, took advantage of it when he won a few weeks take, ago. Yeah, take it. Absolutely. All right. So there you go. Those are the three uh, pretty good bargains at this point. Next up, uh, we've got Kozlowski at 18. Uh, we've got Gibbs. And then we got uh, Blaney, Logano, Busher. Uh, so between 18 and 25 to 1. We'll start with uh, Kozlowski and Busher. So Busher... Really, and the, the strange thing about Busher last week was that he had no history at the racetrack. Nothing. So that's why it's going to intrigue me to see if this is a carryover, uh, whether it's with other drivers, other teams, or maybe this specific team with a specific driver. So we'll keep that in mind. 
Um, but Kozlowski, he's done well here with the new car uh, when he hasn't crashed in the last three races here. So that's good. But he's only led 22 laps in his last eight here. And I don't know. There were some races where I've been willing to take a chance. But it's at the point now where it's like, I don't know. I'm, I'm just getting a little bit frustrated with, with, with what's going on there. But Busher, you got to commend, like I said, how they uh, finished and started and finished the race last year. I, last week, I didn't expect he was going to keep going. I just figured after we got off to a good <laughs> start, well, this can't, ha this can't keep up. I mean, he hasn't done anything here before. And he almost actually stole the race, um, and we all know what happened. But I will look at Busher especially for this reason. Even though, even this week, he's better this week, of course, at this track than he was ever at Kansas. But he only has one top five and has only led one lap here in his career. The good news is his best finishes were last year, 10th and 3rd. And he's never qualified in next gen better than 8th. So... At 25 to 1, I might be willing to throw a couple bucks on him now, but I, I might double down on him if he qualifies in the top five, or let's say he qualifies 10th and practices in the top five. I might go, all right, you know what? He's still 15 to 1 or 20 to 1. I'm going to double down on him now. I think Chris Buescher is a, a great chance right now. Um, he was he was better than Keselowski last week. He, he had a 10th and a third place at Darlington last season. He granted, he hasn't led laps, but Keselowski, like you said, led what 11, uh, <laughs> over the last three, 20. So yeah. And 22 you, in the last eight. Why, why would you take, why would you take Keselowski this way when you can get pusher <laughs> 25? Um, I, I know there's more history with Keselowski. Uh, he's he you know if you look at the entirety of his record you'd probably want to lean toward Keselowski but I think based on what we've seen the last last week and then coming into this week I think you got to go Busher all the way um, yeah um, we can talk about Joey Logano Logano uh, I, I can't decide whether or not to be you know high on him 22 to one it's pretty good for a Logano and then if if Eric were here he would be saying uh, it's an even year. Like I was driving number twenty-two. He's twenty-two to one. So you know all the all signs point to Logano. Um, he's just had such bad luck this season. I yeah. hesitate to pick him only because of that. But he started on pole here twice in twenty twenty-two. Won the race in the spring. Finished fourth in twenty-two. Came back last season eighteenth and twelfth. Led one hundred and seventy-one laps. Um, in the two races in 2022 so um that numerology thing uh, even year again 22 logano uh, i think i think he's probably worth taking at this point um i just am concerned about how how bad his luck has been this season yeah uh things looked really good for him in 2022 with the next gen car mm -hmm. first and fourth 64 one race 107 led the other race both on the pole I mean, last year, not as good at all. Not sure why. But Blaney, meanwhile, even though he only has three top tens out of 21, two of them were last year when he finished ninth. And this is interesting. He started 11 of his 21 races at Darlington in the top 12. So, you know, and he's got um, a pole and a top five in three Xfinity Series races. So it's it's not like he hasn't done anything here. So like we saw with Busher last week, that's why I wanted to point that out. I think we have to be a little open-minded early on this season and try to take advantage of drivers you know are capable of just turning it on. If Busher can do it, so can Logano and Blaney, and you're getting 22 to 1. Absolutely. I, I think from a momentum standpoint and ability to avoid the bad luck so far this season, Blaney would be the better choice. Um, you know, two, two ninth place finishes in the 2023 races at Darlington, and he's been very consistent. He just hasn't been at the front. Uh, Logano, a little bit more, um, a little bit higher finishes here and there, but a more inconsistency at the same time. So, like you said, from a 2022 perspective, started on pole, won the race, came back, finished fourth in the fall, and then kind of mediocre type of performance last season, just for whatever reason, couldn't get it right. So, um, you know, kind of pick your poison. I, I think they're both great selections at, at 22 to one early, because if they qualify well, they're going to drop um, for sure. 
Um, so maybe those would be ones you'd, you'd be worth taking or you'd be willing to take a gamble on early this week. And definitely, if you're interested at all in Blaney, take him now if you think they're going to drop because, again, he's qualified 4th, 11th, 9th, and 7th with the next-gen car. So he's probably going to qualify good again, and your odds are going to be taken away. Uh, Gibbs, I think this is a pass. Uh, yep. He hasn't started well here. He hasn't finished well here. And he really hasn't done anything in Xfinity Series here at all. So this just doesn't look like a good track for him at this point. The Xfinity stats are what were the seller for me. I think um, this is a track where when you get it, you get it, and it kind of comes overnight. Uh, and Gibbs, I think, has the type of style that can get this track, but when you look back at his Xfinity starts, he really showed nothing. He, he's been dominant and, and very good at a lot of other tracks on the schedule when you look at his Xfinity record, but not here at Darlington. So again, I would wait until that switch flips on him here in the Cup Series before taking him at Darlington. All right, now we got four more of the sort of legitimate long shots, Bubba, Bowman, Jones, and Gregson. And and all four of these are also drivers you want to be maybe taking a shot at. Wallace, I mean, last three results, all in the top ten. Uh, fifth in this race last year, starting on the front row. Um, Bowman, he's driving a Chevy. Even though he's crashed in the in, in, in two of the four with the next gen, they were both in the fall. Take that for what it's worth. Um, Jones, it's good timing that he's back because this might be his best track in the Cup Series. He's got two wins uh, out of 12. And he also um, has a win. Um, actually, he has... Uh, this is interesting, too, because he's one of these drivers that has won without qualifying well. In his win in 2022, he started 15th. In his win in 2019, he started 15th. So if he starts 15th again on Saturday, uh, Sunday, uh, you might want to take a stab at him. But you might want to take a stab at him anyway. Um, and Gregson, how do you not just roll the dice right now on Noah Gregson? Uh, right. Because the combination <laughs> of how he's racing and the racetrack he's going to this is his confidence must be through the roof his head must be like this right now with just total overconfidence about what he's about to embark on this weekend this is a driver that of over seven xfinity series races has never finished outside the top 10 his average finish is fourth he's got two wins five top fives and a runner-up and he's led over 253 laps out of those seven this he's been a dominant race car driver in the xfinity series on this racetrack and he's starting to get it in the cup series and you're getting 55 to one yeah you cannot ignore no cracks in this weekend um just just from the sheer momentum standpoint alone i i mean he's he's driving extremely well getting great finishes the confidence is there and like you said coming to a track where he's had so much success in the xfinity series it's hard to picture an xfinity series race without gregson you know being in contention for the lead at some point or, or for the win at some point um so yeah you got to go with gregson this year just or, or this weekend despite the fact that he's only had one cup series start and when you talk about somebody like getting darlington that is eric jones uh, there, there's no question that Eric Jones gets Darlington. He knows this place. He's always been good. His first series start was a fifth place finish. He won his third series start at the track. That's that's unheard of at a place like Darlington for somebody new in their career. Jones absolutely gets it. And then with uh, Legacy Motor Club, not the most competitive equipment in the field, not the most competitive team, comes back and finishes 10th in the fall of last year. Uh, obviously won it for Petty in the fall of 2022. Uh, so everything going right for Eric Jones. Uh, he, he was ready to get back into the car last week, but they gave him an extra week, uh, held him out, um, didn't put him back in in order to give him another week to rest. So he should be ready to go. And I, I bet you he's going to be more comfortable in the car uh, with his injury than he's going to be out of it. So I wouldn't worry about his injury. But I think Gregson and uh, Jones are at these these odds are absolute must takes together you got to put something on both of them all right and then uh as far as the really deep long shots uh barry suarez briscoe and so forth um the ones uh that would stand out for me uh briscoe because he has an xfinity series win here 
um, even though he's never led a lap and never had a top 10 in the Cup Series. So, But, again, he's, he's doing well. But he's also never started in the top 10 in the Cup Series. So keep an eye on where does Chase Briscoe start uh, this race. And you might want to think about it. By the way, Michael McDowell is doing a hell of a job practicing and qualifying the last few weeks. He's setting himself up. It's just that uh, the results are not really happening. Um, he had both of his top 10s over his career in 2022. Last year, though, he crashed both races. So I don't know what he would have, I don't know what his results would have been if he didn't have any incidents uh, last year. He's 130 to 1. I don't expect or wouldn't wager on these drivers because of the fact that um, I have enough money going with the ones that we just talked about as serious, legitimate long shots. There's no reason for me to waste my money down here. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I, I wouldn't look past um, either. And, and McDowell, just the inconsistency of being able to convert uh, a decent weekend into a, a full race finish uh, for me. Uh, he hasn't done it consistently. He's way down the points, had a lot of problems uh, this season so far. So McDowell just uh, not doing it for me. Nothing from Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Maybe of anybody on the screen, uh, Briscoe would be the one that I would select. But again, if you're getting uh, Gregson further up, then then why why bother even s- stretching for for Briscoe? Yeah, because Briscoe's actually been uh, tailing off the last few races, so that's something to keep an eye on. McDowell is coming off a tenth place finish last week, so um, maybe there's some positive momentum there. But yeah, as far as the long shots, uh, it's no—it's just no doubt it, it's Gregson. He, he's he's clearly the hottest uh, driver right now. He's 19th uh, in the standings, n- not the wins. I guess what are they called? The, the win standings and the what would the other standings be called? Just points, straight points. Point or... standings. Okay. Um, so there you go. Um, either way, if he keeps it up, he's going to end up. Um, battling for a playoff spot. I have to ask you a couple quick things. Just one last thing before we get your picks. Uh, do you think that he has the equipment? Noah Gregson. Do you think he has the team, the equipment? It's all about him. And if and, 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 and what we're seeing right now is not a fluke. And you think that he has the equipment and the team. And as long as he keeps this up, he's going to win a race. And he's going to be a playoff driver. Uh, wow, that's a good question. Um, he's definitely got the team. Okay, I think the team is good. I, I think the organization is solid. I think they're starting to figure things out, which is why, and he is starting to figure things out as well, which is why he's finishing further up and they're, they're being more competitive. I don't know that the full equipment set is all the way there yet. Ford has yet to win this season. Uh, I think Penske has kind of outpaced them certainly early on, maybe not more recently. So I think they're starting to find the things to put them together. I wouldn't put it past him winning this weekend. Like I, I could fully envision Gregson getting his first series win this weekend at Darlington. Uh, so it's not it's not a long shot. However, I think the slow start to the season kind of hurt them. So I think they're, I mean, they're what, almost... 70 80, 70 points it looks like out of out of the playoff positions uh Keselowski with 287 <clears throat> and Gregson down at 216 I think what this team really needs to do uh, obviously a win would be fantastic but I think what they really need to do is just start grabbing those stage points they've been missing those and I think if they can start scoring those more consistently and being consistent throughout the entire race distance then I think the wins will come and I think that's a little bit about the equipment and them knowing how and what adjustments to make throughout the race yeah excellent point because when you take a look at the stage points I mean they're like near the bottom Mm -hmm. I mean there are drivers they're like drivers that are ahead of him stage points is like Daniel Hamrick Corey LaJoy uh, you know that Todd Gilliland. That's just you know, if you, and and you're the one that's that's got three straight top tens. So yep. All right, picks. Uh, let's see. Who you, who would you uh, who who are your top three? Top three. Uh, well, Denny Hamlin for sure. Just the tire management aspect of this race. Uh, and then Truex and Byram. Um, I, I think those are the clear 
choices. Truex on his momentum, Hamlin on the fact that he's fast every single weekend and he's great at tire management, and then Byron because he's in the Hendrick Chevrolet. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, I'm going to go with... Actually, Byron is going to be my top pick. So I'm going to go... I'm staying away from those uh, short numbers this week, including Hamlin. I'm going to I'm gonna go a little bit different. I'm going to go with Byron, and then I'm going to go with... Um, I'll tell you what, I'll go with Byron, Elliott, and Kyle Busch. So I'm going to go a little bit different this week. Okay. Uh, you're t- I mean, Gregson's the no-brainer here as far as the long <laughs> shots. Uh, but yeah, give, me, give us a look. Yeah. So, and uh, <laughs> Chastain is not really a long shot, but... Uh, if you had to pick another one of those drivers, uh, like between Bowman, maybe and um, uh, Kozlowski, who would you pick? Uh, would it be Busher? Well, yeah, absolutely. I, I think you're, you're getting better odds on Busher than you are at Kozlowski. He's got, he's been racing better than Kozlowski. Um, yeah, I think you got to go Busher in that in that section yeah i think we agree on that one all right so that's going to wrap it up now we got what all-star race on mother's day on uh th- on next week the week after all-star race weekend heading over to north wilkesboro yes okay so all-star week not sure what we're doing for all-star week um but uh you know it's i just don't know but we got the co- the big race of course is the week after that so that's the big day uh, with, uh, I mean, yeah. So we have a lot to talk about that next week. So um, I don't know. It's possible we take the week off. I, you know, we have taken the week off before on All Star weeks. So it's possible we do that if we are back, which we could be because we're going to be talking F one as well. That maybe what we'll do is, is come back, talk um, a li- just a little bit for a couple of minutes about the All Star race, and then also uh, obviously talk about F one. So that's probably what we'll do. That makes sense. Sounds good. You got a lot of news coming up for Formula One. Yeah, we have to talk about F1 next week. With so. nobody, with, with somebody actually beat Verstappen. How can you miss the opportunity to talk? About exactly. <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely be talking F1, no question. But we'll we'll throw in some NASCAR as well, just so even if it's just for five minutes, just to give you our take um, and let you know what we're you know because I don't know if it, the rules what they are this year. They seem to change them every year. And so we'll, we'll try to get you up to speed on what to look forward to for the All-Star Race in NASCAR on next week's show. Don't forget, check back on Saturday. Now, I don't know when they're qualifying because they were qualifying. They had this run of qualifying at 10 o'clock in the morning every Saturday. And then all of a sudden, last week, they started qualifying at 5. And they qualified right around the time the Kentucky Derby was starting. I go, who, who wrote this schedule? You know, come on. Who the heck's going to watch this with the Derby uh, getting, getting ready to start like a little after that? But anyway... Um, so I couldn't, and, and then I decided to, to, to do the show on Sunday, uh, which was a benefit in a way because I had the odds. So it's almost like getting me thinking now. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but just keep that in mind, everybody. If, uh, for some reason, I, even if they qualify early on Saturday and you don't see a report, uh, it's because maybe I just decided to wait until Sunday morning to get the odds. Um, so that's possible, but I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll make up my mind each week, but just keep in mind, it's always going to be at this point a post-qualifying and practice report, whether it's Saturday or Sunday. And uh, CJ, don't uh, don't forget to check out, we'll have the link for his race uh, at uh, uh, rotowire.com, which is always available on Fridays. Always available on Fridays. Make sure you get the link and we'll post it right under the video. Make sure you uh, like and subscribe and then also head over to Rotowire to see what the fantasy picks are for the week. Yep. And again, Prime Sports Network and Mystery Caution. Uh, Check it both out and uh, we'll talk to everybody next week.